Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Steve Mortazabi and we're here at the Office of Valley Pain Specialists in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Today what we're going to be doing is showing you an informational video on a procedure called Corner Lock. This is a procedure which involves SI or sacroiliac joint fusion or arthrodesis and stabilization and it's indicated for patients with intractable low back pain related to SI joint pathology such as patients who've had back surgery and fusion. So what I'd like to do is basically show you this uh, in the operating room shortly that we have a patient that was going to undergo this procedure. This is a treatment which is very simple, outpatient, done under local anesthesia and unlike lateral approaches to the SI joint, this procedure allows weight bearing immediately and patients report an 80% success rate and satisfaction rate with the procedure as early as immediately after the post-op period. There are very minimal restrictions with this procedure. Patients can drive very soon after, very minimal lifting restrictions, and they can basically resume their normal activities right away. So without further ado, I'd like to show you the procedure. If we look at a model of the spine, I'd like you to kind of show you in here. This is the sacrum, and this is the ilium. This area here, and this area here, is the sacroiliac joint. I can better show it to you in the front anteriorly, right over here and here is the SI joint or sacroiliac joint. So what's going to happen is the patient will be lying prone. I'll be using x-ray guidance and I'll be identifying the inferior pole of the SI joint and the superior pole here. And I'll be placing a small bone allograft into each of these two areas, as well as demineralized bone matrix. So the allograft, which is a cadet, 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 cadaveric um, tibial cadet, uh, allograft, will provide immediate stabilization, and the demineralized bone matrix will allow for growth of bony union of the sacrum and the ilium together and provide mechanical stabilization of the SI joint, which is normally a very stable joint, but can be involved in pain for conditions. They can also be involved in conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis where the SI joint can become a source of pain. So we provide sacroiliac joint uh, injections here, but when those injections don't last long enough, uh, when they provide relief but don't provide durable relief, then corner lock or SI joint arthrodesis is, is indicated. So let's go ahead and show this to you shortly. Okay guys, so we're back in the treatment area now. Patient is under a light uh, anesthetic. And what we've done is we've marked out the SI joint on the fluoroscopy. If you look at the screen, I direct your attention there. The tip of that marker or clamp is pointing to the bottom or inferior pole of the sacroiliac joint. And that is where one of the implants will go. The other one will go about three inches above that. We'll show you that in just a moment. Okay guys, so now what we've done so far is we've placed two Steinman pins into the, ant the superior and inferior portions of the SI joint. I've made a little one inch incision, two centimeter incision at each of those two locations. And so now we're ready to kind of do the procedure and things are gonna go pretty fast from this point on. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and put a joint finder in to the, over each of the Steinman pins, we'll place this, which will allow us to get into the joint and, and separate it a little bit. Then we'll place a working cannula through this cannula will do basically a percutaneously all the procedures essentially done through this cannula percu percutaneously uh, we'll go ahead then and we'll drill a round hole into each section of the SI joint from the top and bottom inferior superior once we drill that hole we'll make that hole square so we'll go from a round opening to a square opening using this broach device once that's completed we'll place this demineralized bone matrix spongy material into each of the openings with and deploy it with this device. And then likewise, once that demineralized bone matrix is deployed, we'll insert tibial or fem femur allograft, bone graft from a cadaver into those openings as well, which is shown over there. And again, that's used this device, which provides immediate mechanical stabilization. And that's why these patients can do so well immediately after the treatment and not have to wait six to 12 weeks while the demineralized bone matrix is allowing for the body to grow uh, into that area and you know and fuse the SI joint that way. So it's a it's a twofold compartment or, or, or treatment to uh, stabilize the SI joint. And uh, like as I mentioned, patients can get immediate relief with an 80% satisfaction 
uh, recorded. What we're doing now is we're just tapping in the joint finder. It's a little bit of pressure. The patient is under light sedation. I've numbed up the joint and she'll feel a little bit of pressure. But that's basically, that's basically it. And we use x-ray guidance to know when to stop advancing. So basically this is the bone allograft from the cadaver. We've taken this out. We're gonna go ahead and put this in the holder right here. And that'll make it easy once it's time for us to get that out and insert it. The next stage of the procedure, we're basically ready to drill. So this is a, a drill over here, and if I direct your attention to the working cannula, we'll place this drill down the working cannula, create a little cavity in the inferior pole of the SI joint, and then we'll make that round cavity, a square cavity with this device right here. And once that's square, we'll put that, uh, that as well as the demineralized bone matrix right into that area. Okay. So what we've done is we've already deployed the fusion device in the inferior pole, now we're going to do the same thing. This is the uh, guide wire here. We'll place it over the joint finder, right through a small incision that we made, and it's oriented with the long side laterally. And we just kind of advance that down. And we just tap that in. And we use floral to guide us. So you can see it at the top of the screen there. I'm not sure if you can direct your attention to the top of the screen. You can see the joint finder coming in. Raise the table, Katie. And there we go. We can see it right there. And we'll advance a little bit more until it basically hits a hard stop on the sacrum, which it hasn't done yet. Going in perfectly. You'll feel a little bit of pressure. The patient's going to feel a little bit of pressure here. We have numbed her up very well. Perfect. A lot of notifications been put in there. The patient is sedated. Good. A little more. All right. That feels pretty solid there. A little bit more, we'll cut off right. So now we've placed the working cannula as well as the mallet device over the top of that and we're gonna tap it in over the joint finder using fluoro to determine the depth here. It'll be a little bit of pressure for the patient as before. And it looks pretty good there, maybe a little bit more tap. That feels pretty good there. So now it's nice and solid. We can remove this and we can remove the pin and the joint finder and now we have a working cannula to do the treatment on. We'll go ahead just as before. We're gonna go ahead and, and drill that in. But before we do that, we'll take out the, the graft material because once you drill, once you drill it starts to bleed a little bit so you kinda of wanna be ready to go with this material as soon as you can. So once again, we're gonna take this out. This is the graft material. We put the pointy side right in here in the holder. And we can even grab that now, right? Or no, can we just grab it later? Uh, we wanna grab the sponge first. Grab the sponge first. So again, we have the, the bone matrix right over here. And we'll load up the sponge just by hand. It may be hard to see from at home, but we'll load up the sponge right there like that and then we can deploy that once we create a cavity. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and drill the cavity in, this, in the pole of the SI joint. Go ahead and unlock the waggle, okay? Katie. Lock it right there. And it has a safety stop here, so you can't drill too far. Okay, good. So that's the, the cavity's been created then. 
And ordinarily, with a younger patient, you would need to broach, which you would need to turn that round hole into a square hole with this device here. We tap that in, but that's a somewhat uncomfortable treatment, and since she's a little bit osteoporotic, we don't need to do that. We can skip that step here. We can just go ahead and deploy the demineralized bone here right into that opening. We'll just tap that down. I have to tap it down here like that. Plunger on there. Uh, tap it down first. Tap it down first. Yes. And put a plunger there. Yeah? Yes. There. And now we can use the plunger. We really can't see a whole lot on X-ray here. It's mainly just set up to go. And then we'll deploy that little sponge into the joint. Okay. And now we can we can go ahead and remove the plunger. So if it's a little stuck, you can push it medial, the whole thing medial, and then pull up. If that doesn't work, then we'll put the slap count on it. So yeah, we'll tap it in and then... Okay, so we have the cortical graft on the introducer. We line everything up. There's a little opening right there. We'll tap that down, get it into the joint where we made the drilling. We didn't broach, but it should still fit in there. We didn't make a round opening, but this bone is pretty darn hard. It's going to make its own opening down there. So now it's all the way down. And we'll go ahead and plunge that graft right off the tip. Right off the tip. A couple taps. Perfect. That's basically it there. And now we can go ahead. Remove this. Sometimes it gets stuck, gang. Sometimes things get a little stuck there. So what you, they have this uh, pretty ingenious little device here. You screw this in, and then you can use this to remove it by a reverse tapping backward. That's that. And then we can even put a little Novocaine for good measure. Put a little anesthetic down there for post-op pain control. Maybe a little hemostasis as well. And we'll go ahead and remove this with a gentle cephalat caudad tilt. And that helps get it out. And that's it. Two small incisions. We'll go ahead and close with a standard bike and some staples. And the patient will be seen back in a couple weeks for post-op visit. And she might get some relief today. So thank you very much for your attention and watching. Feel free to visit us online at www.valleypainspecialist.com for more informational videos and any other questions. Thanks, guys.